My name is Jim Levette. I'm a uh, practicing physician in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and um, I serve on the Lynn County Board of Public Health, our local public health agency. So I'm interested in, in dealing with issues uh, with respect to coronavirus and thought we'd put together this podcast to talk about some practical aspects in, in avoiding getting infected. Uh, I think the most important thing is, is hand washing. You've heard this many, many times. Uh, but I think that it's important to remember that soap is extremely uh, uh, important. Uh, we all wash our hands and many times just use a little uh, hot water and, and not a lot of soap. But soap is what breaks down the, the membrane covering this virus and, and kills it. So use a lot of soap and scrub your hands 20 to 30 seconds multiple times a day. 10 or 20 times a day would not be too often. If you use a hand sanitizer, I think that's fine. I don't think it's as good as soap and water, but it's, it's certainly reasonable. Uh, if you use a hand sanitizer that has alcohol, it should be more than 60% alcohol. With respect to touching your face, this is another mode of transmission, a way to get infected. I think all of us do that once in a while, some more than others. I would encourage you to think about that since it is a, a, a habit that you can you know, get out of. And uh, you might ask your family and friends to kind of observe you. And, and if you have a tendency to touch your face, uh, try to get over that and get away from it because it's, it's a good way to, to transmit the virus. There's been some talk recently about a face mask, about people wearing face masks. In general, uh, it's thought that that does not uh, protect you from getting infected. Uh, but rather uh, would be used by somebody that is infected. Uh, the reason that this starts to become important now is that there's some data showing that transmission can occur from people who don't know that they're infected. We call these asymptomatic carriers. So that if you don't know you're infected and you're walking around talking to people and so on, uh, you could potentially be infecting them. Uh, so that uh, there's some thinking now about the idea of people wearing face masks. This, this is part of what we call PPE or personal protective equipment. The problem is uh, on a national basis there are not enough face masks for doctors and nurses to use uh, when they're taking care of patients who have known infections. So the idea that the, the public at large is going to wear face masks anytime soon I think is not is just not uh, reasonable. Uh, it is important to know that there's an incubation period with this virus. An incubation period is defined as the time between the point at which you get exposed to the virus. So when, when you contact the virus, there's going to be a period of time during which you're not showing any symptoms. And that's the incubation period. So you start to show symptoms a few days after you, you contact the virus. Uh, there's some pretty good data showing that that time period is about five to six days and that almost everybody, over 98%, show symptoms within about 11 to 12 days. But the mean time period is about five and a half days. Uh, I've seen some other data suggesting that it's even longer than that, maybe a couple, three weeks. Uh, but at any rate, it's important to remember that you can be exposed to the virus and not show any symptoms for a while. That gets us to, to thinking about how the virus survives on various surfaces. In other words, you can con contact various surfaces that have a virus on it. This particular virus, when it's transmitted by uh, coughing or sneezing, is a very small droplet. It's in very small droplets. And so that those droplets can be suspended in the air for two, three, maybe four hours around an area where somebody sneezed or coughed. So it's important to remember that. Uh, it, the virus can survive on cardboard about 24 hours. It can survive on plastic and stainless steel up, up to about 72 hours. But it can also survive on your shoes for about five days on the soles of your shoes. So that's something to think about. Uh, a cruise ship, I think, had documented virus that was still alive or still viable at about 17 days. So the thing can hang around. and uh, I think it behooves everybody to think about that. Your shoes are important uh, as a way to, 
potentially transmit this virus. Uh, I'm not suggesting you wear shoe covers, although that's an option. We do that in the operating rooms. Uh, but it might be a good habit to get into that, that when you return from a store, for example, where you want grocery shopping, you are taking your shoes off before you come into the house, or at the point you get the, into the house, you change your shoes to to some, you know, house shoes, so that you're not uh, potentially bringing virus from the outdoors into the house. But the most likely place you might contract a virus would be a public place, uh, such as a grocery store. So I want to talk about that for a minute. Uh, when you go into a grocery store, uh, I advise you certainly to wipe off the uh, handles on the cart if you're using a cart uh, with uh, appropriate uh, disinfectant cloth or something, Clorox wipe or something like that. I would not advise you to bring in reusable bags. You should let the grocery store provide you with plastic bags that you can throw away. When you get home from the grocery store, again, take your shoes off. You don't wear them in the house. And uh, produce should probably just be washed fairly soon with just uh, flowing water. I don't think you need soap of that particularly, but it's important to wash your hands, of course, first. Um, Non-perishable items uh, can be uh, set aside if you could. In other words, if you don't need to put them away, leave them in a garage or, or outside your house or at least somewhere that's not in, your, in the middle of your kitchen where the virus could, di the virus could dissipate over a couple days, two, three days. Um, it just is a little bit of protection. Uh, keep in mind that you can wipe off uh, boxes and plastic and things like that with a wipe, uh, but uh, frozen foods can also have viruses on them, for example, if they're covered in plastic. And in fact, cold can help protect the virus where heat kills the virus. So microwaving things that you bring home is not a bad idea if you, know, if you need to heat, it, <clears throat> heat them up anyway. And uh, I would refer you to an excellent video I ran across recently by a Dr. Van Wingen uh, in Michigan. Uh, he has a YouTube video on how you kind of handle uh, groceries when you bring them home. So it's an important uh, thing to think about and I would advise you uh, or recommend this video. It's a, it's a YouTube video. It's www.drjeffvw.com. So it's www.drjeffvw.com. Dr. Van Wingen. A um, couple of other items I, I just want to mention. Um, what do you do with mail and newspapers? Could they have virus? Well, potentially they could. Honestly, I'm not sure exactly what the surface survival is on paper, but uh, one habit that might be reasonable would be to put aside mail that you don't need to read immediately and let it sit for a couple days, again, for that virus to dissipate and die off. So that would be something to, to consider. Some people uh, like to wear gloves, and I would. Uh, make a couple comments about that. It's not a bad idea to wear gloves, but certainly you can uh, protect yourself from getting virus on your skin. But I would be very careful about wearing gloves at a point where you're going to, you know, you're going to take them off. Uh, one of the downsides of gloves is they can protect your hands, but they can also accumulate virus on them. So uh, they, in a sense, they're not as good as hand washing. But uh, when you take the gloves off, important thing is to remember not to grab them at the fingertips where the virus would likely be be, uh, be on the glove. Uh, I would advise you to take the, the glove at the wrist, pull it off from the wrist off, and then it immediately wash your hands. So that's a removal technique for the glove, I think that's important, and then the hand washing. Uh, if you're outside, I, I think that's probably, we all need to get outside, but it's important to keep that six foot rule, stay away from people. And then don't touch things that are in public places like a park bench or something like that. So that that's pretty much what I wanted to discuss today. And I, I uh, appreciate your attention and hope this, this made a little bit of sense to you. Thank you.